In this video, we'll try and understand what osmosis means and what osmotic pressure means. So this is also one of those colligative properties that we're going to cover. So let's say, let's say you have a beaker full of water and these circles in blue here are just water molecules and let's say you put in a solid wall in between. So you have a solid wall in between. Now you pour in some solutes on only on one side of it. Let's say you pour some glucose or, or even sucrose, sugar on one side on the left side. So now you have these big sucrose molecules spread out across the entire compartment here. So now as long as there is this solid wall in between, nothing is going to happen. But as soon as you take this wall out, you remove this wall. Let me just erase this. Now what do you think will happen? In this case, the, the water molecules and, and the solvent, the solute molecules, the glucose molecules are going to diffuse from one side to the other. There, there will be a lot of mixing and eventually if you give it enough time, this whole solution here is going to be one homogeneous mixture and the concentration of solute and solvent everywhere is going to be the same. So, so that is what is going to happen eventually. And what drives these molecules to diffuse is basically these concentration gradients, both the solute concentration gradient and the solvent concentration gradient and that is the basic premise of diffusion we know that so so now let's say you put in a wall in between but this wall is is a membrane that has a special property to it let's say this is a membrane and this membrane happens to have these tiny pores that are built into it. And these pores, let's say, are, are big enough for the, for the solvent molecules, the water molecules to pass through, but they are not big enough for these large glucose molecules. So what happens in this case is you still have the solution on one side and the solvent on the other. And again, there is a, there is a strong urge for these two to mix and form a homogeneous mixture, but then it cannot happen the same way as before because the solute mo molecules cannot go through. The only thing that can go back and forth is the water. There is a net flow of um, water from the solvent side to the solution side, basically in an effort to reduce the concentration gradient between the two sides. So, so this process is called osmosis and I've um, written down the definition here. So this uh, osmosis is basically a process in which a liquid passes through this semi-permeable membrane whose pores permit the passage of solvent molecules but are too small for, the, for these large glucose, these large solute molecules to pass through. So as you can imagine, this membrane, the semi-permeable membrane that is selective to, you know, what it allows and what doesn't is the key to this, this uh, osmosis process. So, so these membranes and these osmotic processes are present all around us and, and even inside our bodies, in fact. We actually have a wide variety of naturally occurring biological membranes like for example vegetable or fruit peels or, or even our uh, cell walls in our body. So all of these are these what we call SPMs, the semi-permeable membranes and of course there are a lot of synthetic and man-made membranes as well of different pore sizes. So, so we'll look at a lot of examples and applications of, of these processes uh, in detail in, at the end of this discussion. But, but let's just examine this, this phenomenon of osmosis in a little more detail using a simple schematic here. You'll see very soon why I drew this setup this way. We're going to talk about pressures, hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure. So, so it's easier to, to, to talk about those pressures this way. So in any case, so this, let's say this cell is set up so that the liquid level on either side, so on one side you have the solution and the other side you have the pure solvent and let's say the levels are, are the same, are exactly the same at the, at the beginning. This is your SPM, the semi-permeable membrane right in between. So now as, as time goes by, very soon you will see that the level on the solution side actually goes up and the level, the, the liquid level on the pure solvent side goes down. So let's just mark that here. So this actually starts going up. Then...
So clearly what this means is there is a migration of water molecules from the pure solvent side to the, to the solution side. So now you might ask this membrane it should be is, is permeable to water on both sides. So you should have flow going in both directions. And yes, water is flowing in both direction, but the flow going from pure solvent side to the solution side is more than the flow going the other other way. And and why is that? Again, because of the difference in, in concentrations or, or the concentration gradient that we were talking about. So you have the concentration of water is obviously much more on the solvent side than and on the solution side. So there is a stronger escaping tendency of water to go from right to left than from left to right. So if you think about it, prob probabilistically, on this side of the membrane, the, the surface area is completely occupied by water molecules. So let me draw these, these molecules in blue here. So the entire surface area is, is completely occupied by water molecules. But on this side, you have water molecules, but you also have the solute molecules competing for space with the water molecule. But remember, these sol solute molecules cannot go through this membrane. So the only thing they are doing is sort of reducing the surface area of water molecules in contact with the membrane. So just by simple probability, you have more water going from right to left than from left to right. So as a result, there is a net flow that's going from pure solvent side to the solution side and hence the level here goes up and the level here goes down. So, so we got that part now. So the next question is, will this flow from you know, the pure solvent side to the solution side, will it continue forever? Meaning will this level keep going down until this whole side is empty? You know, that could happen only in situation where this column here is not tall enough, and th this cell here is not tall enough and you're not letting it build up, you're allowing it to drain, then, then that scenario is possible where you have solvent going completely from one side to the other and this whole side becoming empty. But let's say this compartment is very tall here and the solution is well enclosed at all times and then you have, you're just letting the height of this liquid column build up. So in that case, what do you think will happen to the water flow from the solvent side to the solution side? You might say that there is still a concentration gradient between the two compartments here. Concentration of water is more here. So the flow should keep going. But, but in reality, what happens is as, as the liquid column is growing taller and taller, it will exert its uh, hydrostatic pressure. And we know that. And we know what that pressure is at any given height in the liquid. At this height, the extra pressure apart from the atmospheric pressure, so you have have uh, P atmosphere acting on both ends, P A T M, P A T M. But this ex extra hydrostatic pressure at this point is is rho G H, and we we already know that. And we also know that from Pascal's law, the pressure here at this point is going to be the same as pressure here at the same height. So the, as you can imagine, this extra column pressure squeezes the solvent molecules closer together and will tend to push the solvent molecules across the membrane back to the right side. So, so in a way, their escaping tendency here has gone up. As a result, what happens is the net flow of pure solvent from, from the right side to the left side actually goes down because now the flow coming from the left to right has gone up. So as the column increases more and more, there comes a point where when the hydrostatic pressure from the column is, is high enough to counteract this flow of water from right to left, at, at which point there is no net flow of water. So there is still water going back and forth here, but there's no net flow in any one direction. So this is sort of a dynamic equilibrium here and, and we call it osmotic equilibrium. We can say that this is the extra pressure apart from the atmospheric pressure that had to be applied on the liquid to stop the osmotic flow of water. So now in this case, the pressure was hydrostatic. You could also just apply an external pressure like you could use a piston and artificially apply some the same pressure and prevent this osmotic flow. That, so that pressure is in fact called osmotic pressures. In this case, it will be this difference here. That is the osmotic pressure. 
So then you might ask, what, what happens if you apply more pressure than the osmotic pressure, say with a piston? So then the escaping tendency of water from this side, from the solution side, becomes even higher. And as a result, what happens is that the net flow is actually going in the opposite direction, going from the solution to the pure solvent compartment. So, so that is in fact called reverse osmosis. And so we'll talk more about osmosis, reverse osmosis, osmotic pressure and, and examples and applications and in the next video.